Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video. A couple times a week, we're gonna be featuring my podcast, 50% Facts, some snippets and highlights. Each episode, we dive into one topic, one question, and in the first half of the podcast, me and Jim McD analyze and try to talk about and ask questions on the question. Then in the second half of the podcast, we bring in the world's leading expert to give you everything you want to know on such topics. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you want to find the full episodes, there is a 50% Facts podcast YouTube channel, and it's available on all platforms, iTunes, Spotify, et cetera, et cetera. Check it out. Give this thing a thumbs up. Tell your friends, and I hope you enjoy. Well, speaking of performance and and uh, and health and all of that stuff, um, actually, our final topic is about uh, dieting for performance versus dieting for health general health mm -hmm. and maybe we, before we get started uh, me and jim might have made up some stuff i forgot but maybe you can even give us what your definition of health is because i think everyone's definition of health is maybe different for me i i yeah. kind of said like you know i'm not trying to live to 120 and have the last 40 years suck for me health personally is like kind of feel good no disease yep. no no injury uh look good enough live long enough sure. but not sure. get fucked up where i think some people might want to live forever uh, despite going, you know, I don't want to have surgeries. Well, I, I don't want any of I that. I think it's, I think it's important that like we just create that clarification. I mean, I think that when we talk about longevity, you know, what is longevity to you? I'm like you, I don't want to live to be 110 years old with somebody changing my diapers the last yeah. 20 years of my life. Like that's not what I want. Like a life, you know, longevity for me is I want to wake up with energy. I want to feel good throughout the day. I want to be happy doing what I'm doing. And I just want to enjoy every moment. Um, if that means I only live to be 85, I'm, totally at peace with that. Now that's me. I don't place that on other people. You might come to me and say, you want to be 130 years old. Okay, cool. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then performance, I, mean, I think Tom, we can Tom all agree. Billy is big on that. Performance. I think we can all agree is just, uh, doing best at whatever task you have basketball, powerlifting, whatever it might be. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very objective thing, right? Like yeah. performance should not be subjective. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. And you know, a lot of people are just weekend warriors with this kind of stuff too, and so yeah, even they might want to perform a little right, better. right. Yeah, so what are well, what, I think, what are some of the differences uh, in your eyes and in, in nutritional protocols and yeah, your thoughts? Well, ironically, I mean the foundation of everything I do. Like, so if you came and you had a consult with me and we were either on Facetime or we were on you know in person here in Scottsdale, I would draw a triangle for you. And at the top point, it would say performance. The bottom left point, it would say aesthetics, and bottom right, it would say longevity. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you the marker, and you have to place where your goals live inside of that triangle. And the reason I make you do that is because if you put at the very top performance, right, which is what Rich Froning or Matt Frazier would come in and tell me, um, the two, you know, two CrossFit Games champions, um, all they give a fuck about is winning the CrossFit Games, like the end. So, you know, they didn't win the games multiple times for having the best abs or for having the best physique or, or for good work and markers um like none of that shit was ever taken into account it's a very objective thing either their times or their loads lifted um were the best and and everything they did in their life their training their recovery and their nutrition revolved around that now conversely if you want to live to be 120 years old you, you didn't give me the caveat that you want to be 120 years old with abs um you know banging chicks like Hugh hefner right like living like living to be 120 years old is, is living to be 120 years old. There's no cosmetic or performance that's going to come with that. In fact, I would argue your pursuit of longevity will be in direct contrast to trying to be the best performance athlete, which is why the, you know, the bottom right point of the triangle is maximal distance from the very top of the triangle. Um, and we can bring aesthetics into this conversation as well. You know, the guys that are trying to achieve peak aesthetics and, you know, Mike, you, you're friends with like Eric and the 3DMJ guys. Yeah. Ask them how they feel when they get to a, you know, to a stage. Number one, their performance has taken a hit, but their quality of life, the way you and I define longevity, has also taken a hit. It yeah, is it's an extreme. Awful. Um, yeah, like they have no sex drive. They can't get an erection. Uh, they sleep all the time. They can't focus like they normally would. And so anytime we're looking at the extremes, they're, they're literally going to be as far away from each other as possible. So when I always ask a client, where in this, like where are you willing to make sacrifices? But if you don't create the understanding on the front end to a client that says they're pursuing longevity, um, that, hey, your pursuit of maximal longevity is going to come with a performance decrement and likely an aesthetic decrement for failure. And, and I think that like the, the psychology of understanding what your goals actually are and what your goals is the single most overlooked piece of the dietary world. 
What's the majority? That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I think any goal we have, uh, you know, taking CrossFit or powerlifting or strongman, any goal we have, um, sadly, you know, the law of specificity lies, and anything you want to go to and be very, very good at, you're going to have to sacrifice the other. If you want to squat a thousand pounds, mm-hmm. you're probably not going to be able to be the best runner you could be. Could you be an okay runner? Maybe, depending on genetics, training, tra- age, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I think that's kind of where you're getting with your diet. Like, the, uh, uh, at the risk of being really good at something, you're going to risk being not so good at other things. And most people are, absolutely. Who, I mean, most people who are going to squat a thousand pounds are not going to have the aesthetics of uh, a, an yeah, Alberto exactly. Nunez. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, you know, you put Alberto Nunez on stage next to the other five, you know, top natural bodybuilders. They don't ask them what their back squat is, and Alberto's one of the stronger natural bodybuilders. Yeah, he yeah. doesn't fucking get any extra points on stage for having a bigger back squat. If only like, he, right? I mean, hey, like he would love that, but unfortunately, he's trying to win something that's the pinnacle of aesthetics, not right. performance or longevity. I mean, if he, you know, they could give Mr. Olympia this year. Like rumor has it, Kai Green's going to come back. Kai Green could win the Mr. Olympia and die the next day. He's still going to go down down in history as Mr. Olympia. They right. didn't like reward him or take away from him for, you know, whatever use it took to win that. Mm. Like that's just part of their sport. Yeah. What do some of those diets maybe look like? And, uh, and and how similar if if we just say the person hypothetically, um, maybe we'll compare and contrast these three things. So we have your triangle example, which I like a lot. Let's say they go in each corner. Right, so they're the extreme of, of longevity, they're the extreme of aesthetics, and they're the extreme of performance. And then somebody else is like dead middle, where all of them kind of matter. How mm-hmm. how different? Yep. And I know it depends on person, obviously, and the sport. Um, and aesthetics is even a, a, a gradient, right? If you want to look like Alberto, where every vein has a vein, or if you just want to <laughs> look okay on the beach, right? Like that's way different. And then uh, performance obviously is very different too. If we're talking a marathon runner versus a power lifter versus a soccer player, but Generally, um, what do maybe some aspects of those diets look like? Yeah, so I'll give you some like some you know actual examples. When I uh, when I was at the CrossFit Games two three years ago, one of the athletes I worked with that year was Travis Mayer. He took tenth in the world. And you know when we were there, everyone's like, well, "What do you eat while you're at the games?" It was like the one question everyone wanted to ask me. And I was like, "Well, he's eating about seven to eight hundred grams of carbs a day, and dinner is typically like a burger and fries." Because you got to remember, these guys are training four times during the day. Like, we don't have time really to get real food in. So, mm-hmm. I need calories at night, period. And I need something that I've tested that he can actually wake up tomorrow and train after, right? So, like, if, if we've had pizza in the past and he's sluggish the next day, pizza is not a great source, even though it's calorie dense. But we tested, like, prior to it, that a burger and fries seems to work great. He wakes up the next day, he feels good. Literally, like, they say, like, he ate everything the same night. Now, I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you as a nutritionist that that's in any way healthy because it's not. Um, but I don't give a fuck about health that week. Like I'm paid to do a job, which is make him perform the best and recover the best. And so I'm making sure that he has the fuel and the recovery he needs to be his best. So that's a performance application. Now, do we do that year round? No, that's in season. Um, you know, there's some other different protocols, like, you know, like immediately post CrossFit games, we're going into like a post season. We're looking at hormonal recovery, you know, GI recovery, things like that, things that may have been damaged during the season, but from a, a performance application, that's what we're looking at. Now, you know, in season aesthetics, like let's use a natural bodybuilding competition. We know, you know, calories are going to be bare minimum. Um, you know, you're trying to get to that skinless kind of look where, you know, veins have veins and, you know, and even for people that are trying to just look good on the beach, they're probably taking their calories to the lowest point that they will consume in the course of their life, you know, because that might be the the pinnacle of what they're trying to achieve. So it's there's no way that being in a significant deficit is going to make you perform better in the gym. There's also no way that being in a significant deficit is going to make you feel your best. You know, you're not going to have the cognitive function. And you're not going to have the mood stability. You're not going to have the sex drive. Like those are just things that you have to get ready for. Um, and then obviously on the longevity piece, you know, the application just becomes controlling inflammation, controlling stress. So, you know, in, in the, from a food application in a performance, it's going to be calories and then understanding the fuel substrate of your activity. So 
for most athletes, uh, it's going to be carbohydrate because most uh, sports come down to being glycolytic. Uh, so maximum amounts of carbohydrate, regardless of what the aesthetic or longevity effect is there. Um, in the bodybuilding world, it's going to be understanding your own unique physiology. You know, are you somebody that needs slightly more protein, less carbohydrate, you know, less fat? Are you somebody that needs a ketogenic diet? Um, are you, you know, because of lifestyle preferences, you know, vegan, but you know, whatever it is, it's really about calorie and macronutrient control there. And then in longevity, uh, you know, the two diets that are often used there and, and full transparency, I don't work with a ton of people that come to me that say, I want to be 120 years old. So I rarely am creating applications there. Uh, but you know, research tells us, you know, a ketogenic or a, a plant-based approach are probably going to be our best bets. Wow. <laughs> Well, that was a, you just wrote a book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I mean, dude, ironically, like that's the, but I wish that was more understood, right? Yeah. So the person in the middle, the, I actually will call bullshit. Anyone that says they want to be in the middle, I think most people operate in the middle right now in their life. Yeah. And so if they're coming to me for help, it's because they have a desire to move out of the middle towards one of these points. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think people that claim they want this balance are, are actually full of shit um, because I've, I've never at, like, I mean, I've drawn this triangle for thousands of people now, and, and I've never had somebody do that yeah. um, because, you know, that's that's kind of status quo, and, and very few people are, are wanting to be status quo. Yeah, I think the only status quo well, – something I've learned as I've aged, uh, instead of, like, getting mad at anybody or, like, confused, I just say, like, nah, they're dumb. And so, like, people that are just, like, stuck like, – they're, they're, and this works here because they're, like, nah, they're probably just too stupid. They didn't think about it. They haven't even th given a thought about their self. You know, like they have yeah. no self-awareness and they're just dumb. So they don't even really care what's going on. And they're just kind of moseying through life, which, hey, power to you, dumb people. Sometimes I've, t I've also told myself I'm not no genius, but I wish I was dumber because then I just wouldn't care as much about anything. You know, you don't care when you're dumb. You don't care how you look when you're dumb. You don't care if you die when you're dumb. You don't care if you perform good. You just kind of cruise. I'm not going to worry about losing audience over that because nobody who's actually dumb thinks they're dumb. So. No, you guys are all so <laughs> smart. Thanks for listening. <laughs> if you're listening right now it's because you're smart you're not in the dumb category um what no, about, I, I'm, so like a food you you, you broke it up pretty good like i go ahead <clears throat> go ahead no no go ahead uh you broke it up pretty good so kind of overall calories uh and how to get those in during a performance time carbs obviously being kind of an emphasis aesthetic kind of the macronutrient breakdown like you said and a calorie deficit depending if you're trying to be a bodybuilder etc cetera, etc cetera. lifelong perhaps keto perhaps vegan but the food choices potentially could be very similar through the three. Sure. Right? Like you could still have chicken and broccoli and a potato yeah. when you're dieting. Chicken, broccoli, and potato maybe when you're trying to be just generally healthy. Chicken, broccoli, and potato when you're trying to perform. It's just the <laughs> amounts and maybe well, the leniency I, I in between. Would argue that the, yeah, I would argue that the quantities necessary to perform at the highest level are, are rarely going to be met with quote unquote high quality foods. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm. Like I, I mean, again, right, we're looking seven, eight hundred grams of carbs a day for your top performing athletes. And when you're training three, four times a day, how the hell are you gonna get that much chicken and potato in? Yeah, yeah. That's um, why there's Gatorade and who knows what else. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, yeah, and that's where I'm a you know, I'm a big fan of, of workout like and, and I'm a big fan when I'm working with clients on understanding the nervous system and, and the nervous system response to training um, because we're starting to see a lot of correlation, CNS, HPA axis, and a lot of the issues we're seeing with people's inabilities to create transformation or performance increase are HPA axis related. Uh, that's just relative to the last awful 10 to 15 dietary years that we've had as a culture. Um, so I am a big fan inside of all these protocols really around controlling the nervous system and, and making sure that there's no metabolic adaptations occurring. But yeah, from a food source perspective, uh, I mean, you can, you know, on the pinnacle of aesthetics, we joked earlier that sugar's the devil. Like there's zero research that says any amount of sugar inside, as, as long as you have the appropriate amounts of proteins, carbohydrates, fiber, and fat, there is no research that tells us any amount of sugar will not get you to where you want to be physique wise. Um, and there's a lot of fucking college kids that have done IIFYM that can validate that shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, now, but then we take that same approach and we look at somebody that's competing and it's like, hey, maybe you have a really high sugar meal or a half before you train, you see some reactive hypoglycemia during training. Is that going to affect you? Well, I would argue, yes, it absolutely is. So food choice, in my opinion, becomes more important in the performance and longevity realms than it does in the aesthetics. Um, you know, data shows us that in the aesthetics, it is not at all what you eat. It's how much, uh, with the caveat that you have to hit 
you know, calories, proteins, carbs, fiber, and fat. Makes sense. Makes sense to me. Yeah, it does to me too. I, let's put a cap on this one. <laughs> I mean, really, when we when we talk about it, like so many people, because of the fucking zealotry that's out there, they want to overcomplicate this shit. Right. Yeah. One hundred percent. Well, yeah. People people make money selling products that over over compensate over over. over What's the word complicate? Like? Complicate. They probably you. overcompensate as well. The similar yeah, that type too. folks. Well, that's that's why I'm poor. That's why I'm poor, man. <laughs> yeah. Nothing I sell is nothing I sell is sexy. Um, you know, I, I I speak the truth, and and the, the truth is rarely sexy in the dietary world. So maybe if I came up with something like the carnivore diet, like I would be a lot richer than I am, but I just wouldn't have the ethical uh, ability to to live with myself. My longevity would would take a hit. Well, Mike's gonna get really rich with uh, tequila and broccoli. His and you're not guys. dumb. Follow me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dumb, so I will follow you. That's, there we go. That's <laughs> my new ebook too. <laughs> new York <laughs> bestseller. <laughs> you're not dumb. Dude, your next ebook should definitely be "You're Not Dumb." I'm coming. I'm coming to the top, Oprah. You Put bought, me on your list. You bought this book because you're not dumb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, appreciate you taking the time, man, for all three of these episodes. Uh, where can people find you? Yeah, dude. Yeah, bro. Um, I would love to have people just, you know, connect and ask any questions on Instagram at Jason Phillips underscore I am three or just reach out to the company. I am three nutrition.com. Uh, we're always taking on new clients. If that's something you're looking for. Cool, man. Thanks awesome. so much. Thanks Enjoy so the rest lot. of your di- uh, day. Thanks for uh, taking the time to talk to us and uh, I'll be in touch soon. Sounds good, brother. I look forward to it, man. All right. He's silent. Mike with two K's. I am at the Jim McGee. The show is 50% facts. We're percentage of word. We'll see you next week. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. Dude, you got it, brother. I appreciate you guys' time, man. Yeah, stay in touch and uh, just remind me, and I can connect. Yeah, dude, you with I'm gonna, shoot, I'm gonna shoot you a text, and yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to connect with Colleen, and then uh, yeah, I'm gonna make my way out to NorCal here shortly, man. So we'll meet up. Yeah, 100. percent Let's grab a session and maybe another podcast. Awesome. Let's do it, brother. I'd love it. Later, man. Bye, guys. Later. I don't got a little bit dropped out yeah. at the end there, but I'll just have that's to... what I was trying to yeah wrap it, stitch it together. He's got some uh, Jordan Shallow uh, voice. Not only like mannerisms, but voice, doesn't he?